actually uh, we use uh, the root of ginseng as a kind of medication in traditional Chinese medicine. There are a lot of different legends in ginseng. For example, the root of the ginseng looks like human body shape, so people believe in eating it for our health. I'm Kwang Yiku, I'm a former dentist and bioartist at the same time. And uh, this time I'm working on Millennium Ginseng Project. So basically it's related to ginseng. So it's a plant which is used in traditional Chinese medicine. And people believe in this kind of plant because uh, it's good for our health. It's for anti-aging, especially the wild ginseng. So people like the wild ginseng. Uh, compared to the cultivated ginseng. So the problem is ginseng is in danger recently. So this project aims to find a win-win system for both protecting endangered ginseng and also preserving the Asian medical heritage. In this project, I'm collaborating with a plant scientist, Rashmi, from Utrecht University. So her research is about how plants can survive in extreme environments. So I was kind of inspired by her research. I would like to apply her research to my project. I'm a plant scientist and my basic research focuses on how plants interact with their environment. So plants are very, very sensitive to changes in their environment. And as we know now with climate change, uh, the environment is varying a lot and plants need to cope with that. And not all species can cope with extremes in their environment. So as a scientist, we're always looking for opportunities to um, explain our science and what we do to the general public. And I think we as scientists are not very good at doing that because perhaps the language we use is too technical and not uh, fun enough. So I thought it was a fantastic opportunity to really interact with artists who, of course, um, have a much, I think, easier link with the public because they have a more visual and creative way of communicating their message. Uh, so for me, it was a good opportunity to really um, bring my science to the public through a more creative outlet. And he told me about uh, his ideas for the Millennium Ginseng Project. It really uh, made me also think differently about how we uh, view, how we grow our plants. Because from the perspective of crops, we always want to grow them in the most optimal environment so they deliver the best yields. But what Kuang Yi was proposing was to on purpose grow plants in a stressful environment, again to our benefit, but in this case we wanted the plants to produce some stress compounds that might be beneficial or enhance the medicinal effects, in this case of ginseng. And this really appealed to me because this was a completely different way of looking at uh, plant environmental interactions. Um, and that excited me and I also uh, was curious as to how this would work out. And of course, my original goal was to popularize my science through uh, this interaction. And that also I saw as a very creative outlet for uh, doing so. I was uh, immediately uh, interested because that she told me that someone was trying to uh, grow ginseng on the moon. That was the, <laughs> the plan in the end. <laughs> um, but when I, I went more in, into the, the subject, um, I was interested because we try to grow ginseng in the garden. And for us, it is a very difficult plant to grow. So I'm interested as a gardener, uh, how do you grow ginseng in our climate zone? The core of a, a, a university botanical garden is the collection of plants. It's a documented collection. It's an honor to collaborate with a Botanical Garden in Utrecht University. Uh, we are trying to design several different extreme environments for ginseng. So at this moment, we are designing the first uh, experiment. And in the future, we are planning to provide a diverse and different experiment to test uh, which is the best way to uh, cultivate a super powerful ginseng. Normal science communication, or at least how I uh, interpret it, is where you just um, try to explain to 
a non-scientific community uh, without using too much technical uh, jargon about what you do, what it means, why it's important to the society. But with this creati creative uh, collaboration, um, what I um, see would be different is that the creative part of it will be more attractive to people because it's more visual and it's more artistic. So uh, people might be at first attracted to the artistic and creative aspects, but later on they also come to know more about the message that is hidden in the art. And so it's a different way of communicating the same message and I think perhaps more effective because of the creative uh, side of it. He is an artist, he, he is just asking sometimes weird questions, uh, not bothered by any knowledge uh, about growing plants. So it's a challenge for me to answer his questions. Um, it's a challenge for me to, to, uh, to, to assist him uh, achieving his goals, uh, but also say, well, this is not gonna work. So about the ginseng growing in a hothouse, it's not a good idea. I think the best uh, chance will be outdoor. Uh, so that's for me very interesting to work with uh, Kuang Yi. So usually people like the fruit plant is more beautiful, like uh, more smooth or more round. In Jensen Lee's case, it's the other side of round. From culture perspective, the more wrinkled it is, the more ugly it is, is with more value. Yeah, okay, I, I, I suggested uh, also, uh, so, so do your experiment with ginseng, but also introduce uh, carrots and radish. Um, and that's mainly because they grow very fast. Um, so ginseng, I, I think it will take uh, maybe months, maybe even years to get those really good uh, established. Um, but carrots and radish uh, gr start growing, have, you have, will have results within months already. So comparing the roots of plants in a, in a good potting soil and a rocky soil uh, will show uh, uh, very, very quick results with radish and carrots, but not with ginseng. Because for me, it's still the question, will, will we ever succeed growing ginseng in the, in the greenhouse? Even though it is so uh, futuristic and, uh, uh, you know, it is fantasy, um, at least at this stage, uh, but that is what, like I mentioned before, will be the um, element that pulls in people and gets them to think about uh, what the central message is, which is like um, over time these plants develop more and more potent compounds in, their, uh, in them and that um, through this crazy idea of time travel you could potentially, uh, like Huang Yi says, uh, compress time and therefore have a super potent plant and of course it seems like the stuff of science fiction but I think that is what is going to um, uh, trigger people's imagination but at the same time also make them think about the central message that uh, is trying to be uh, conveyed here. Artists and sci scientists uh, are uh, uh, complementing each other because especially when, when you want to tell the story about your, your science, your research, um, there is a huge gap between the scientist and, uh, and the public. They don't understand uh, even don't understand the question uh, the scientist is working with. And, if you, and as an artist, you're not bothered by any knowledge and you just ask questions. And you just think about a way how to get, to get an answer on the question. And I think that's more uh, the way visitors look at the same, uh, the same subjects. So to make a connection between the main public and science, in my opinion, artists are, are, can play a key role. Just like me, you made, you triggered the thinking in me that of course you can also make plants uh, uh, provide beneficial uh, output for us by putting them in stressful conditions, especially from the perspective of say medicinal compounds. And yes, definitely um, this will also get, I hope, other scientists to start thinking about that it's not just about improving crop yields but also improving uh, the, the beneficial compounds in plants and 
that aspect might involve subjecting plants to stressful conditions which uh, triggers them to produce more of certain kinds of metabolites and compounds that are uh, beneficial for certain applications in human health. Um, and I think this is a field that is probably already existing, but um, perhaps through this project this uh, message is spread more, not just in the general community, but also the scientific community. So the core value of Millennium Ginseng Project is trying to find a win-win system for both uh, protecting endangered, species, uh, endangered ginseng and also preserve Asian medical heritage by combining traditional Chinese medicine and also agriculture biotechnology.